Hello, this is Bill Morgan, president of Parker University. And we're at Parker Seminars in Las Vegas, Nevada. And with me today is Craig Liebenson. Dr. Craig Liebenson, thank you for being here today. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, it's, it's an honor. We're talking about our favorite subject today, chiropractic. So Craig, where do you think chiropractic is going right now? Where should it go? What do you, where do you see the, the profession? Chiropractic is positioned so perfectly to be the benchmark provider to help manage the modern disability crisis. We have more and more people that are disabled. Health span is shrinking while lifespan is increasing. And I don't know anybody better than movement experts like chiropractors to begin to address this, to give people hope, to give them a tangible plan. So you've been sharing this message for 30 years now. You've been pushing it. What would you have told a younger Craig Liebenson, somebody who is 25 years old, if you were gonna go back in time and, and get, kind of cue you in on, on what you should focus on? You know, I think the biggest thing, that's, that's an interesting question. The biggest thing that, um, in my own journey, and I have no regrets whatsoever, mm -hmm. um, my, my biggest thing in my own journey where I lost my way for a while was I was trying to teach people perfect movement patterns. I was seeing glitches in how they move and I was trying to make them better and better and better and refine them. But I think I went too far and I think that, that, that people when they're fragile, the greatest thing you can give people is to make them feel resilient. And when you load them a little bit, rather than try to police perfection with their movement patterns, their self-efficacy and confidence soars and then they feel like they can take on the world. I think you just nailed it right there, is, is people, and that's the disaster we have on, I, I think you've, you've coined the phrase being a victim of your MRI. You get an MRI and you've got a disc, you know, I've had people walk around, oh, I've got a disc bulge. Oh, their shoulders sag immediately. Yes, yes. truly. And, and they're just, they're a victim of that for the rest of their life. They can't get that picture out of their mind. No, and the same thing happens with their own history. People say, I, my back has hurt ever since I was 12 and I fell. And so they're condemned to a life of us chasing the pain, chasing the symptoms, instead of getting to the source and explaining to people that, that you're not built to break, you're built to last. And we're in a position to orchestrate an environment where people can feel uh, resilient again and have a sustainable journey going forward. About 15 years ago, the Joint Commission had hospital, the, the Joint Commission for Hospital Accreditation had hospitals make pain the f fourth vital sign so that we had to address pain. If somebody had four out of 10 on an analog pain scale, they had to address it. So they changed the, the dialogue from, or from looking at function to pain. And that helped to create the, uh, the opiate crisis we have today. So what's your opinion on, oh. where, where does pain stand versus function? This is, this is sad. This is, this is, uh, this is criminal. Um, we, we put the focus too much on palliative care instead of a precision approach on helping the individual uh, to become more, more of a better coper and to be able to adapt better in their social context and their environment. Uh, we need to give a hopeful message. The sky's the limit for people. Uh, if somebody can be handicapped and not have a leg and still run a marathon, then somebody who's being told they have arthritis shouldn't then walk out of the doctor's office thinking they have to learn to live with it. Mm -hmm. that, that's not true because we can reboot the nervous system. We, we have cortical plasticity. So our message should always be of hope. It should be of a tangible plan, an achievable plan with behavioral nudges, small steps, step by step. Um, and then we have to actually prove it. We have to give them a positive experience with movement. That's awesome. Thank you so much for being here today, Craig. Oh, thank you. And, and I don't know if everybody realizes what an what a <laughs> amazing uh, human being this man is as a chiropractor to put, put us in a position to help more people. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Blessings. Thank you.